All supplements and drugs are, are basically active components of whatever nutrient they're trying to get in the body. But the interesting thing is you can't just make a tablet purely out of the substance that you want to go in the body. You need these things called excipients. And what excipients do is a couple of things. They help the tablet bind together. They help the, the powder flow. They help the liquid stay soluble, for example. They're just added things to make the drug or the herb more palatable. The problem is there's some that are good for you and some that aren't good for you. So on today's podcast, we're going to be talking about excipients. As always, this information is not designed to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any condition and is for information purposes only. Please discuss any information in this podcast with your healthcare professional before making any changes to your current lifestyle. Stay tuned. The ATP Project is about to start. Welcome to the ATP Project, delivering the irreverent truth about health, aging, performance, and looking good. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, ready to perform at your best, or somewhere in between, then sit back, relax, and open your mind as Jeff and Matt battle the status quo and discuss everything health-related that can make you better. Welcome to the ATB Project. You're with your hosts, Matt, Steve, and Jeff. G'day, guys. G'day. How you doing? Good. What else is in your supplement? The funny thing is we've done a podcast a while ago talking about what's not in your supplement mm. or what you think is in your supplement, talking about the actives. But a lot of people don't know or there's a lot of confusion around excipients. And, you know, some good, some bad. Some people don't even know what they're there for, why mm. they need to be in there. Mm. So what's what's just really quickly? What are excipients and, and why are they in our supplements, man? Yeah. Especially, and they're in all supplements. But I mean, yeah. I'm thinking encapsulated. Yeah. They're in tablets. They're in, in powders. Yep. So we're talking about uh, excipients. Uh, they talk about fillers, binders, uh, lubricants. There's a variety of different types of fillers for different purposes, depending on the product. Whether you're making a capsule, a tablet, a powder, or a liquid, or whatever will determine what excipient is suitable, but also the machinery, what type of machinery you're using to process it. You know, does this machinery drop the powder from a height? Um, does it have to form a plug like capsule? Does it have to um, bind a tablet, then coat it? Um, so depending on what you're doing and also depending on the properties of the herbs or nutrients or amino acids. So everything's got a different weight. It's got different properties, whether it flows, whether it's sticky, whether it absorbs moisture. Sometimes we need an excipient to keep things dry. Um, what we'll do is we'll run through uh, some of the excipients and actually what they do, but also it's almost going to give people a bit of a, a reference, almost a glossary. So we'll go back and explain what some of these words mean. Mm. For example, um, a machinery lubricant, you know, like magnesium stearate got bagged really badly because it was it's used as a machinery machinery lubricant, and um, and when I go and question a lot of people and that are criticized or you know say oh magnesium steroids evil because of this yeah. and i go and ask them i said well why, what part of it what bit did you read that made yeah. you think it was really bad and they're saying oh look it's used to it's it's actually it's an industrial lube and i'm like what and they said it's like it's a machinery lubricant yeah and these people were describing something that's actually like pumped into a grease nipple of the car mm. to, to to release and and may contaminate your product so they're talking about like grease that's used in machinery but that, that's not what the way it works mm. like in, in this instance like magnesium stearate it's a very waxy substance and the whole point of it is is if you've got a dusty product dust will settle on um, machinery and mm. you know like go dust dusty chalky mm. that can actually degrade the machinery but also you lose your product you're, you're wasting material um, and it, the whole machinery gums up you got to stop break everything down clean it pull it apart redo that again um, and the cleaning chemicals and that sort of stuff could easily be much worse you know yeah. but um, so that's what happens it, but actually the way it works as a lubricant is it by just stops the um, the dusty, chalky stuff from sticking to the metal plates. Right. Mm. So it actually helps to keep the, mach the the powder itself better bound. It keeps the powder to itself and stops the powder from fluffing and puffing and making dusts of you know clouds of dust that will coat the machinery and get in the stuff. It, it's got nothing to do with actually grease in a machinery joint to stop it from you know squeaking or something. You know. <laughs> so, but that's what people would describe it as. So we, we were actually talking about a wax and. Um, uh, I'll, we'll talk more about it. I mean, I've kind of jumped straight into something yeah. there, but that's right. No, that's okay. Oh, but I'd tell Steve a cool story about it before because, like, 
I'll never forget the time then I was making a product with broccoli sprout powder. And the broccoli sprout naturally contains waxes like these stearic acids mm. and these magnesium stearates. It's actually just part of the seed that's part of the sprout. And I never forget when I used to use that semi auto. Um, that's a semi automatic capsule semi, machine. Yeah, the semi automatic capsule machine, um, which works by just powder falling in. Mm-hmm. So you don't actually have to bind it. Like the automatic capsule machine, it actually has to get our powder, push it into like a capsule shaped plug. Mm. That has to hold together in that form so it can drop down inside the capsule and then we put the lid on it. Mm. Yeah. You know, not, not with our hands, but you know, do quite a few well, of them at a time. It's 10 times faster, isn't it? The, the auto of the yeah. semi automatic? Well, the semi auto has just got a, a wheel. Uh, wheel where all half capsules sit and the powder just falls almost like your cap and quicks that you might be doing at home just mm. to put powder into capsules that's how the semi-auto works it just falls into it but I never forget using the broccoli the fresh broccoli sprout powders into that by the end of the day there was that much natural wax and stearic acids across the machinery it was so well lubricated that if i put the put the um the little scraper down it would just hit the hit the top of the table and just skim off it'll just go flying uh. and everything was just kept moving <laughs> off and you could almost see your face it just got shinier mm. and shinier and glossier through Pretty the day so. as the natural waxes in the plant were lubricating machinery was it was it? that's what magnesium stearate does that's what stearic acid does was yeah. that the yeah. original very original machine mm. that we had that was held together literally with duct tape oh yeah like this, no, thing, were, this thing was 25 yeah. years old and when we got it this is when we had to yeah. take over manufacturing yeah. ourselves <laughs> Yeah. I said to Matt, I said, that thing, I don't know if that thing's even going to work. Yeah. Matt became the machine whisperer. Like, oh, yeah. Nobody could make not, that machine I'm work. not a mechanic guy. Like, I'm not you a have to become guy. one, though. But you have to become one just by very carefully pulling stuff apart, cleaning it, putting it back together. He but when, so when he said, yeah, he held together duct tape, that's that's like in behind it. Yeah, the actual yeah. area that touched, oh, no. touched the products, it was like so But immaculate. underneath the hood, yeah, yeah. you know, it was, you know, literally this thing came off the arc. That's what we used to yeah. joke about. But Matt became very intimate with that machine. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> that was during the Alpha Mars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was encapsulating Alpha Mars. I got to think I inhaled too much. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh geez. We don't want to know about that. Yeah. Exactly. We'll, we'll t- just talk with the chemistry a sec. <laughs> <laughs> magnesium yeah. stearate it's steric acid which is a fat that we found in our diet yeah. naturally and magnesium yeah. is in everything yeah. so those two things they're not, not a problem before we talk too much about it one thing I should say we don't actually have magnesium stearate in any of our products <laughs> no, we um, so we're going to talking about yeah. magnesium this is a funny thing yeah. we used to use things like magnesium stearate methyl cellulose calcium phosphates so we used to use all the standard mm. um, natural excipients mm. um, and when I say natural excipients methyl cellulose is a fiber mm. um, calcium phosphate is calcium phosphate it's just a calcium um, stearic acid is a, a waxy stuff and, a mm. ma- and attaching that waxy stuff to magnesium is what's what's that one that is mined off in the cliffs it's compl- titanium dioxide, titanium dioxide. Titanium which dioxide. is the what? scariest yeah. <laughs> according to people I, I mean if you say to people I, I know, and I've forgotten it again, but what's mm. the dihydroxide? What's, what's oh, the, name, yeah, the chemical yeah. name for water? Yeah, dihydromonoxide. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. I was pretty close. H2O. H2O. Yeah, yeah. yeah. DM, yeah. DM, DMHO or whatever it is, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, uh, and I've mentioned this before on the podcast, but this is this whole thing about a lie gets a halfway around the world yeah. before mm. truth has a chance to get its pants on. Yeah. Mm. So they went out and they interviewed all these people and they said, look, there's this, there's this chemical and we want it to be banned. Last year, uh, if inhaled, Mm. Um, it will. It is fatal, and it has killed yeah. millions and millions of people. Yeah, Last ingestion. year, this many people died from yeah. ingesting it. You know, it from inhaling in lungs. It. It's, yeah, it's, it's found terrible. inside cancer cells. I yep. mean, one hundred percent of cancer cells has got the stuff in it. Mm. And they go yeah. through and they create this mm. this horrendous story about dihydromonoxide. And people are like, and you know, apparently yeah. they they went through and they got a massive list of people saying, yeah. yes, let's ban it. Yeah, ban it. And, yeah. and, and this is because it is a scary, scary sounding yeah. chemical. They didn't write H two O, no. which we do recognise, or they didn't write water. No. no, and this is the funny thing. So, what the problem that we had is that we got these normal excipients. Now, we manufacture under Fazan's guidelines, which basically means that we label everything that goes into the product in descending order. Mm. So, everything that goes into that product's labelled under TGA uh, with an Ostel number. You don't actually have to label the excipients, no. except for a couple of ones that they think will cause immediate allergic reactions. So. People were looking at our product and going, why does your product have all these weird chemical names in it, Yet these t- and it's a food, and these TGA products don't? 
And we're going, what weird chemical names are you referring to? And they're listing off things like magnesium stearate. Mm. To me, sounds scary because I don't know what it is. I'm saying, mm. oh, okay, well, it would. So does, ooh, yeah. <laughs> if you didn't know what's behind the door. But yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Man, um, but and, and just for American listeners yeah. and for people overseas, um, TGA is like, like the FDA. government. It's like the FDA, FDA, but it's like the government, that, that, that you know, sort of mm. like, you mm. know, the, the big boys. Yeah. Whereas Fizantz is food standard Australia and New Zealand, yeah. which is, yeah. which is um, food. Food. Yeah, yeah. So we basically under the same guidelines as the people that make breads and that sort yeah. of stuff, which is why our products, people criticise the proprietary blends, but that's actually the legal form of labelling for our... Not <laughs> for in our that. Department. Every... Um, every Everyone's Half already copied and don't mm. start. Well, they try. Oh, mate. Anyway. Yeah, they'll copy anything so, again. So, you know, you mentioned the TJ. Um, so those buggers don't label it. So when they're comparing our products to other products, then they're not seeing these excipients listed mm. on the others. They're going, how come you've got this stuff? And we're going, oh, no, no it's nothing. You know, we, we were spending a fair bit of time educating people. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, this is what we worked out. In um, the, There's a lot of bad press about such things like magnesium stearate mm. online, mm. when you trace mm. it back to it, it all goes to the one place. This is the one the we were The people that at. made the natural excipient alternative. Now, I feel a bit cheated because oh, so when everyone bad. kept having a go at us about uh, magnesium, how, why have you got magnesium stearate and titanium dioxide? That's all titanium they really Titanium dioxide is the only one I remembered. Titanium yeah. dioxide is, is a smidgen in there to make the capsules white and it's the most inert... Yeah. Basic, Does nothing. perfect thing goes straight through. Again, you know, sounds but damn sounds scary because I think I read once when I was at a bag shop that I was almost bought a travel luggage made of titaniums or something. You know, like you hear well, people hear these armored things. and tanks. I mean, yeah, titanium, yeah. you're thinking yeah. heavy awful. metal, metal yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, I and, and dioxide is a sort yeah. of a ooh, oxide that sounds yeah, like yeah. I'm gonna if sounds I take like it as dihydro monooxide yeah. relative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, it, it almost sounds do, like do, you're gonna rust. Do you know what dioxide is? No, oxygen. Yeah, O2 in the atmosphere. Right. And, and you mentioned water and oxygen. They're both inorganic as well. Yeah, yeah but it's yeah, a pro, exactly. it's a pro radical, Steve. You'll, give, you'll get cancer from that because well, of oxidisation. We've got an organic podcast and we've got yep. our basic chemistry podcast yes. that people can go to. Yep. But we, we removed our stuff out of it. Um, we removed the scary words like titanium dioxide went to clear capsules made of hypromellose, which is a fibre from pine that trees. That sounds a bit scary. No, yeah, it, it does sound scary, no, but it's actually a so oh, mellow. Yeah. So hypromellose is a fibre. Um, it's a prebiotic fibre, so our capsules actually work good for gut health as well. But anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. We went over to natural excipients. Mm. So we went over to um, get a silicon dioxide. Instead of having silicon dioxide from a supplier that can supply 22 different forms of silicon dioxide, depending on my application, silicon dioxide allows things to flow. It also stops things from going hard while in storage. Um, it also uh, a drying agent. That's the same stuff they put inside those little sachets. So if you ever oh, yeah. eat one of those little sachets, it's not so bad. It'll go straight through. But I'm not recommending you eat them. Um, so silicon is fine in that sense. So we switched to a natural silicon from rice, but we got one. You know, so we went from 22 different forms of silicon, one from powdered beverages, one for capsules, one for tablets, one for all this sort of stuff, to over to a rice one where you get one form. So there's a lot of extra burden and challenges mm -hmm. to try to deal with that. Same thing, we went over to a magnesium stearate that's made up of a rice combined with um, some other oils because they need to actually make a waxy substance by processing the rice with oil to make it behave a bit like magnesium stearate. Yeah, right. But it doesn't behave exactly like magnesium stearate at all. Um, you know, we got other fillers. So we've basically gone all natural with our product range because we found it easier to give the consumer what they wanted than try to educate against this. But when we went to have a look at the research and go, where the hell is all this rubbish coming from? There was another company, not ours, thank goodness, or I would have really spat the dummy, but there's another company that makes natural excipient alternatives. Their whole marketing campaign was to spend a period of time destroying things like magnesium stearate and silicon dioxide mm. so that way people would be looking for their product. But so they tricked the consumer. So this is the thing, man. Bait they, and switch. Yeah, Classic. they tricked yeah. the consumer into thinking this stuff's evil and they armed the consumer. They gave mm. the sheep teeth and fired them right up to come after people like us. So then people like us would go to the natural excipient company and fall for their tricks and buy it, which we did because, you know, it's really hard to educate people. But now, in hindsight, looking at the way the magnesium stearate is one of the ones that people hated the most, when I've really quizzed people, they honestly, I think the perception is that they think it's a, it's a same lubricants that we use in, you know, the grease nipples of your car. Your and bearings, they're they're yeah. thinking that that's getting in through the product. And it's not actually the case. It's in most of the other Ostel products and everything already. They just don't actually have to list it. Mm. So these people will be using <coughs> other products and 
not even knowing it's there. It's that inert. You yeah. don't have to worry about but it. The classic, exactly. classic business case is mm. to um, identify normally or create a problem when there isn't really one there. Absolutely. It doesn't matter, right? And then yeah. provide the solution. Yeah, sure. exactly. I mean, yeah. there there are real problems with the the therapy, the TGA listable, um, you know, excipients. There's some horrendous ones well, what, there. Because this is a thing, Steve. Because they don't actually have to label it. So no. under us, we label what goes into our no. product. But under TGA, they don't. Give us some why. Give us some info because, because they only have to label the actives. You only have to label actives in a TGA product unless and, it's going to likely to kill you, it, it, like it, it, tartrazine. Like hell, hell well, well, tar- tartrazine they have to label. That's about it. That's F D and C yellow. Yeah, right. But but like you know your your, your blue Viagra tablets. <laughs> Steve. Yeah, you know how they're that blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's the F D and C blue. Color. Yeah, it yeah. just doesn't know what is it is. Is that right? Yeah. So the Viagra yeah, is yeah, FDNC I can blue. honestly say, I can yeah. honestly, well, I'm not going to give it to my dog. Viagra, oh. No, me neither. Because I read once, I read a story about a bloke that didn't have impotence and used it and he well, died or something. And he, he got necrosis. Oh, really? Like and I was like, oh, oh. No, really? Yeah. No, really? yeah. I heard like just one story. But so you can see, even myself, like, yeah. I hear something and then yeah. it's like, oh, I'm not going to touch it. But don't forget. So these other people hear these stories no, and then they, oh, I'm not going to touch We're it. wide for it. And especially if, it, it, yeah. and, and the funny thing is, is that how to grow rich, um, you know, think and grow rich, you mm. know, by Napoleon Hill, there's great business models in there and it's mm. aspired to noble motives. Mm. The problem is that these movements get hijacked many yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, and it's not just in our industry, it's in any industry. Especially when you see politicians get involved, go 180 degrees, and you're probably right. But they will try and latch on to something that is good, mm. and then pervert Twist it, it. And, and, well, and that's when well, you get the well, problems. They have actually tested the safety of the blue dye, so I can yeah, tell go us, to Johnny. Tell us, tell us, you got the blue dye and the, and the Viagra. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Do not is, give Viagra to your is, dog. Yeah, right? this is not good. <laughs> Um, they give Viagra to their dog. Yeah, warning, These people. Wa- trigger warning and all that sort of stuff because there, there, was a, there was a study done. I can't remember it anyway. They gave, uh, in 1966, they gave this, uh, they, they just tested it on, on you know, six dogs and they gave them just 2% uh, blue. What, Viagra? No, the no, blue. The blue, the blue, oh, blue Viagra. The blue colouring. Uh, the blue yeah, colouring. Now, now, they have to, they have to colour these tablets so you can re- the physician can recognise mm. them, so they have to be a standard to colour. So, no, they gave, gave um, you know, 2% to six dogs and four of them died. Um, you know, so that's Six, not. Four so, of them died. Yeah. And so then they thought, oh, let's see how it works in vaccines. So they, they vaccinated rats with the diner because, you know, you, you, you want colourful vaccines. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, and of course, they, they developed tumours where the injection site is. So that, that, that was subsequently passed and is still used to this very day in natural medicines. So that's allowed in, in natural medicine. Yeah. And, and medicines. And it it's, doesn't it's, have to, does that have to be labelled? That one doesn't have to be on the label. It doesn't even have to be on the label. No. So, so why would anyone, no one's ever going to Google that one and find out that it kills your yeah. dog? Was it, was <laughs> the amount that we use, Steve, inside? I mean, obviously, and, and we always say as well too, dogs are different yes, because are. of the way that they process things. Mm. I mean, the interesting thing they did with rats, which mm. which is... Well, that was just the... Inter- you, can't, you can't test it on No, but the human. big point is they did one safety study in 1960-something. They killed almost 66. everything and it's still got bloody passed. It's, it's still to this very and day to this passed. very day, it's still on the still list passed. because they don't have to label it. No one's actually Googling it to see what this thing there's, is. There, there's kind of worse ones than the Brilliant Blue. There's, really? There's like the, the, the four, they've got the four standards of, of caramel. One of them is called Caustic Caramel. <laughs> and I'm not joking. Caustic caramel. But, I'll have but, the caramel. That, that, that's only the class one. You want to know the class two caramel? What's, it's what's the difference between caustic sulfite caramel? What's the difference between a class one and a class two? Oh, there's four classes of the caramels because they they, they kind of a a different sorts of caramel colors. What's, what's, what's the class dark? four then? We're talking about light to dark. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, dark okay. caramel. Light to dark. Like and the last have class. Have you burnt your butterscotch or are you just? And, there and even nice class three caramel. has got ammonia caramel. <laughs> It's but, so but, appealing. But class four is sulfite ammonia caramel. Look, oh give me that. Gosh. There, there you go. You know what, Steve? We, we should name and shame. We should find out who's got this in their product. This, this is a TJ know. list that I just downloaded about half an hour ago. I don't this, think this we is can what, find out. Like, I, don't think, I don't think we can. No, I, they don't have to list it. Isn't it funny as well, too, in Europe at the moment and in the United States as well? Do they have to, to list well? it on the TGA website? Oh, you know the oh product yeah, specific. actually, they if you go the to, ARTG, yeah. If you go, yeah. to, if you go to the would. ARTG, if you just Google yeah. that, but if you go to tga.gov.au, yeah. you can actually look for the product specs yes. for each of the TGA-listed products, including our Capzia and that sort of stuff that mm. we've listed through mm. TGA. But yeah, and you should be able to find it on there if you're interested. Or what about the flyer inside, Steve? So I know it's not listed on the container, mm. but in the little pamphlet, yep. do they have to put it the in drug? there? Yes, they do. So that, it'll be in there as well. So you can have a look, but you've just got to look a little bit harder. It's not going to stand out. 
No, it's it's terrible. I mean, they've got titanium dioxide and they've got some good ones. They've got saffron as a color agent too, of oh, course. Wow. Uh, riboflavin, which is B two. But they've got you know some some really terrible. You know, tartrazine is completely listable. You can Quinoline use that. Quinoline yellow. Yeah, it it's got shockers. Nice. Red twenty seven. Remember the color yeah. ones we did? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're all horrendous. Stephen, when you were away, we did a podcast oh, yeah. on, on colors. Gun what about diluents? Diluents, yeah. And they they Does bulk he, out the read tablets. Read that word. He, he he's. Read it. You got your goggles on? Oh, yeah. Uh, di- diluents. It's not dilutants. <laughs> yeah, it's di- diluents. Yeah. Unless they're missing a T from this scientific study. But this is what you add to tablets because if, if you've got a 10 milligram active like, uh, as you said, a, a low dose Lipitor or, a, you know, a sleeping tablet that are very low dose, you know, benzos, mm. then you fill the rest of it out with these things. And they're usually Because the tablet's, what, 500 milligrams yeah. or 1,000 milligrams? Yeah. So they're going to put 10 milligrams of an active into a 500 up. milligram pill uh-huh. so you got 490 milligrams of that's filler so you want to kind of and you got to color it to make sure it's standardized color that's so right. is that anyone can, and that means it's artificial color because a natural color is usually you know break down because they're natural oh, and yeah. that's, and right, variable. Variable. that's right so that's yeah. why they have to use synthetic colors in the because they have these TGA books for drugs. the drugs and tga products yeah. and mm. they got these books that so if if whatever they see these pills in a Webster pack, or if they yeah, see, you know, pre-packed pills or something, they can actually identify them. Yeah. Or if they spill them all, they can put them back. And, in and, the you, jar. and you've got to remember the TGA covers Ostel and Ostar, and Ostar are the drugs, and Ostel are typically natural medicines. There's some examples. Yeah. Very, but that's so. So it comes under the same category. So an Ostel uh, therapeutic good can have these colours in it, no problem at all. That's crazy. So huh? a natural medicine can add these colours in, no problem at all. Yeah. That's that's the and standard. Not listed. No. And they don't have to listen no. unless it's specifically tartrazine. But you can see why tartrazine pe- causes anaphylaxis oh, wow. in some people with asthma and that sort of stuff. People can die yeah. from a tartrazine. There reaction. was 560 tablets initially in the 80s with tartrazine and I looked it up. They're, they're vastly reduced now, but there's still a lot of tablets with them in them. Mm. But you can understand why people get so upset. And when they see something that they don't understand, and mm. this is the clean label movement, is that when people look at something and they don't understand what it means, mm. they assume that it's bad. It's probably not actually a bad thing from a viewpoint of not health. usually. Mm. And to, then go and educate yourself. Then go look those things up onto a website or what have you. But yeah. this is where people want to understand and be able to read a label and know and identify with everything that's on the in that product or on the label, if that makes sense. Well, so I mean, one of those other uh, diluent. I don't know how to say that bloody word. I feel like a dill saying it now. Another one of those dill pickle things <laughs> is lactose. Yeah, and lactose. What frustrates me as well is you get a lot of people that are taking multiple pills, they're taking all this sorts of stuff, they're lactose intolerant. Mm. And then they're complaining of indigestion, they're going to their naturopath saying, oh, I've got this constant bloating, or that or that product you put me on is making me fart and gurgle. Mm. And they're lactose intolerant and they're loading themselves up on lactose. Most homeopathics sit into a lactose little pill, but a lot yeah. of the drugs are all lactose based as well. Which is exactly, me. I'm lactose intolerant. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, lactose is found in the contraceptive pill, is a classic one, yeah. uh, where the inactives are lactose which is the seven and we did a podcast on this and and how many people out there known known to be lactose intolerant that might be on the pill most humans have some sort of intolerance to lactose and one of the side effects of the pill is bloating yeah. You know, just like, well, maybe you... I mean, it's only a smidgen of a dose in that yeah. one, but it's when you stack them together. Yeah. If you were to do that and then you throw some homeopathics and you do some other stuff... Drink some milk. It's interesting, though, as well, too. Yeah. The different different um, races have different levels of um, intolerances as well, too. And I, I believe that the Asian population is a very high... Um, Tolerance whereas dairy. with Caucasians, they're Mongol, and the Mongols were the, one of the success behind the Mongols mm. was they were lactose tolerant, yes. right? And so they could actually go through, and while everyone else was starving and hungry and weak, they were actually loading through and are capable of eating all the dairy and oh. thriving while they're yeah. taking over places. Do you know something that's interesting as well? Too? You that's know why that the Chinese say that um, milk is a barbarian drink. They oh, actually that right? say that no, 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 that's this for, for the, the barbarians. barbarians. Is that right? The, those with the darker skin. You know, that's funny. Spend more time outside working. Hey, if I was <laughs> to ask you just quickly on anthropology, if yeah. I was to ask you what's the average height of the um, human, um, male human, what would you say the average height is? Oh, nowadays uh, oh. five foot nine. Can I go in the old measurements or not? Yep. You can yeah. go old measurements, five foot nine. Yeah, it's, it's like What's interesting is that it, it varies from country to country. Yeah. In Australia, it's five uh, five point uh, five foot eight and a quarter mm. in Denmark tallest average height in the world of six foot is the average height the so high it varies yeah. In, yeah in parts of Africa it's it's extremely low yeah. Yeah. like you know it's down to five foot six in parts of Asia as well too a lot of kids yeah. drink a lot of IGF-1 out of their milk the insulin like growth factor one which causes yeah. growth in, in humans which is in their tumour cells but yeah. that that's one of the terrible side effects of dairy is the IGF-1 content so would that yeah. have an impact on, on the ability for you to grow because I mean I would f- figure though that the 
that is based on your bone, you know, because mm. once your bo- bone yeah, plates are closed, because they got the highest rates of osteoporosis. Who's that? Sorry. Who? Those European places the with Danes. the highest consumers of dairy. Yeah, yeah Germans yeah. as well too. Germans mm. are very tall. They're about five foot eleven. Mm. It's funny. I just thought it was interesting, and I just mm. wondered if that had much of an impact. Anyway, we, yeah. we digress. Yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah. But do you, do you want to know about another dye that that I love the study? Yeah. The, the conclusion of the study says, uh-huh. other than the acute convulsive deaths of some of the test mice immediately after injection, huh. no other deterioration of attributors to the weekly cutaneous were observed. Safe. So that's safe. Safe. Man. That's passed. <laughs> So oh, apart from the co- you inject them yeah. and they get convulsive yeah. death, it's like no, apart from those, yeah. it's like, and that's the conclusion of yeah. the study. Man, it's a horrendous thing. Isn't so it? in our products, we use pretty much rice, uh, different yeah. excipients based from we rice. We don't use any of these. Um, FD&Cs. No, of course we don't use any of that um, because we use clear capsules. They're semi. They're a little bit opaque because mm. of the. Um, the hyperamylose is a little bit cloudy, but we don't get the coloured ones because the coloured ones you've got to do bits and pieces. Mm. We don't want titanium dioxide. Even though it's safe. Yeah, yes. even though it's safe because people won't buy the product because they're freaking about titanium, titanium. dioxide. <laughs> titanium um, poisoning. Yeah, so we have most of our herbs, they have a natural colour variation. Mm. So we then, then left explaining why their colour variation has changed. Uh, have you ever so we're always apple? explaining something, but the funny thing is, is... Mate. Calcium phosphate's excellent. Like you say, calcium phosphate, don't be afraid of that. If you see calcium phosphate in a supplement, mm. don't be alarmed. It's used as a chalky substance. It helps to bind because when you push it together, it kind of stays. Mm. It's also nice and heavy. So when I say heavy, what you've got to look at, the reason why we have excipients, because you might be wondering what, you know, why, apart from just filling up space, would mm. you use them? So it, with machinery, I was talking about encapsulation before, Semi-autos, they just fall, the powder falls in. The big auto machines, they've got to make a plug and, and actually make the inside of the capsule stick together to drop it in. So you need some extra binder sticky stuff. If your powders are too light and fluffy, they just, just keep going into like clouds of dust. Same problem if you're trying to fill a powder, a tub of powder. And people might wonder why when they get a product, their powder, it looks like there's hardly any in it, like a bag of chips. Like, unless it's Pringles. You know, like those bag of chips, how they, they, they always look like there's nothing in it. And it's because they settle. Um, when you first put stuff in, it's all light and fluffy. If your product's too light and fluffy and flowing too well, it turns into a big dust cloud. You can actually lose 5 to 10% of your actual volume lost in a dust cloud. That dust cloud's coating the room, coating mm. the people working it, coating the labels so things don't stick. So we need excipients to actually allow the powders to flow properly. Same thing, all of a sudden you've got to change your excipient if you're dropping it straight into a uh, barrel or if you've got to go up through an auger against gravity. So these are the reasons why when we're doing mass production, you have excipients in there. Also, we've got a certain size capsule that we're going to fill with herbs. And so I want to put in, so for example, if I know I can fit like 700 milligrams or something in there, if these herbs are really light and fluffy from one batch to another, they change because we're going from natural, we've got natural variation. So we can change the properties of the herb. And so one batch could be very light. And in that instance, we've got to add calcium phosphates, magnesium stearates or something heavy that helps to, the powder to settle so we can increase the weight and reduce its fluffiness. Mm. If we were to add silicon to that, all of a sudden, the powder's getting lighter and lighter, fluffier, fluffy. You can't fill up the capsule. It's like bouncy, fluffy, and air-filled capsules because of the fluffiness within the powder that will settle later while mm. it's sitting in. So these excipients are, are very important to be there, plus also to be able to regulate the dose of your medicine. So when mm. you've got a blend, we need the homogenous blend so we can mix certain ingredients with the excipients to disperse it through a whole blend. That's why, because you know, if you have a look at a formula, you might have one ingredient 10 milligrams, another ingredient at 500 milligrams, and I want that dispersed evenly. So you can actually blend that in with the excipient with a bit of colouring or something like that, so you can see the obvious dispersion. When I say colouring, you can use things like cocoa for a brown, you can use mm-hmm. the beetroots for the reds, you can yep. use the turmerics for the yellows, yep. all these different mm-hmm. little things um, to actually show that we're getting that nice dispersion as well. Plus, we test everything anyway. Well, it's, it's, I mean, if you look at the Noe protein, for example, that was one that, you know, being in the industry for such a long time and using, you know, whey proteins, I was always used to having something that you could just add some water into, mm. you know, shake it up, and it was blended beautifully you know yeah. and no no froth and all the rest mm. of it and that was considered to be the standard 
now that we're making protein ourselves and we don't use any um, you know, anti surfactants or mm. whatever what we use was it surfactants? What do we use now? I don't I'm not. Well basically the problems that we Fitness. have with collagen. So, you know, it's, it's, pro- it's proteins that makes things froth for yeah. starters. Yeah. So if you get a good whey protein, it should froth like buggery mm. um, because it's actually – if only I watch that Heston. You know Heston Blumenthal, Blumenthal. Uh, oh, whatever? Yeah. Um, he, he, he uses whey and that in his stuff. Does One, he? He coats his chicken wings in it to, to caramelise them and stuff, oh, which really? I reckon looks like a really cool idea, unflavoured mm. whey and milk powder. Wow. He does that. But also if he wants to make a cappuccino, if he wants to froth – up and make a frothy mousse he'll add the pure whey really it helps to hold the froth now with collagen collagen is huh. so pure and collagen is like 99.6 percent right? it depends how much moisture but otherwise it's pure protein uh-huh. um the problem is with it that we had is it would clump yeah. or it would froth and like seriously we'd put in a dose you'd have a shaker of froth so we had well, to break down that surface tension with a bit of oils and a bit of gum yeah exactly. i mean i got a big frothy part there it's kind of almost like a cappuccino mind yeah. you we've improved our understanding and technology a lot oh, and the new yeah. chocolate flavor is 10 times better than the old one too yeah, that's because i flavored but the original one and now we've got an actual flavor person <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, a co- I'm not even allowed to cook at home yet you guys have me flavoring this stuff oh my God. give it a crack matt i well, give it a crack the thing is though is that you know it's like that old saying is that um um, <clears throat> you know, if it tastes bad, it's good for you. Well, <laughs> that's that's what we but I mean, the interesting thing I'm is, though, is that, that well, there's a lot more um, interest in the space of natural and good, mm. and we're actually starting able to be able to improve our our blending and our textures and mm. our tastes and everything just using through everything natural. Because mm. that's what I want. I want everything natural. Mm. I don't want mm. chemicals where I don't have to use them. Yeah. So, so these excipients and fillers, so many different reasons for them being there. Sometimes it's to get the machinery to work or to get the powder in the tub. Sometimes it's to get the stuff out of the tub mm. <laughs> mixed with water so you can drink the thing mm. um, without it actually behaving really badly. And sometimes we have to put excipients like uh, drying agents and such as silicons and that sort of stuff dispersed through the powder to stop it from going clumpy and hard while in storage and um, to improve shelf stability. Yeah. But when you look at it, calcium phosphate's nice and neat. I don't have, I don't see anyone's got a problem with that. Yeah. Now, remember, they even had a study where you were talking before about colours and oh, yeah. studies they did. Remember, they did the early studies with calcium phosphate. Well, calcium phosphate used to be the main preservative in vaccines. Yes. Um, and calcium phosphate's recently been studied again in comparison to the, an the more reliable. Uh, sorry, re- reliable, more recent um, preservatives such as mercuries and aluminium, and they showed calcium phosphate to actually work better. Mm. Um, without yeah, any right. of the side effects. Yeah, and that we was did injecting, talk about that in the podcast. Yeah, so that what, was injecting big doses. So having a bit of calcium phosphate powder in your tablet, and a lot of calcium, don't forget uh, Blackmores, for example, I, I don't mind listing it off, Blackmores celloids used to be a practitioner-only range, Cal, Cal CPIP. Yeah. Um, Cal, CP, um, through Schussler tissue salts, yes. and all, is calcium phosphate. Yeah, right. It's a therapeutic form of calcium. Mm. Um, i never forget, though, that the silicon dioxide, this is the other funny one, that same company used to sell uh, uh, well they probably uh, anyway, lots of people do this not just that one company but silicon dioxide you can actually go to the chemist and ask them if I tell them I want to buy a capsule of silicon dioxide for my hair skin nails yeah, well, and they'll go straight silicon. to the counter and buy you silicon dioxide hair skin nails Yes, we know for a fact that when we use silicon dioxide as an excipient it goes straight through so these people are making full blown capsules of this excipient that people think is scary because it's got a scary word but it's but not. Yeah, when they like, put a hair skin nails on it, these people, are, they've actually label it as an active. That same people would put the silicon dioxide as an excipient in another product and not label it mm-hmm. because they don't have to label the excipients. It's weird, eh? Yeah, it is crazy. I mean, we were, used to work at a company that used to use magnesium stirrate, but we used to calculate the magnesium content of the magnesium stirrate to add to the magnesium content of the sure. product yeah. because it's actually a decent... It was not de- it's not the best form of magnesium as a supplement, a but it form. is a form of magnesium mm. in a supplement. So that was crazy. The silicon dioxides is just inert sand. Um, it basically goes straight through unless there's some really weird technology happening now with those nanotech, tiny yeah. nanotechs. And that if you make a particle small enough, it's going to get into your body and mm. possibly be problematic. And but, I think that's without yeah. a problem with um, uh, sun cream. As well, they were getting nanoparticles yep. as yeah. well too, which yeah is like I think bentonite clay. Yeah. Remember bentonite clay? We talk about that as well as its ability to detoxify yep. and all that sort of stuff. Bentonite clay can be added in as an excipient. A tiny amount of bentonite clay can be added in as an excipient into your product. Again, it's very heavy. It also helps to make the plug, mm. um, make mean helping your powder to stick together. A good binder, um, and it's inert. It basically goes straight through. In fact, if you get poisoned. 
and you go to the hospital, they're likely to give you either charcoals or, or a clay. <laughs> activated so clay, yeah. They actually do an activated clay or a charcoal to strip poison and cool. mega doses mm. out of it. Yeah, right. Funny thing, at my home, and it's funny because it's starting to become a bit of a problem now, but at my home when my kids do something stupid, <laughs> like pick up a mushroom and eat it off the ground or something, or, or like do put stupid stuff, yeah, you because know, they just put stuff in their face all the time. So we always have dirt. So I've got the dirt, I've got a big bucket of dirt. And whenever they do something, they go, oh, look, I've done it again. I've eaten something off a tree that I shouldn't have or something. <laughs> and then they come in and go, dirt water, Dad, dirt water. So we get a teaspoon of the clay, throw it in the water, and they just drink dirt. Wow. And then it just, whatever toxin it is, they soak it all up. They love it, eh? They're actually a bit weird about it. Because mm. I've got to tell wow. them, no, you can't, it's not a health, you can't have it with your, with your other stuff, like, you know, and suck it out. No. So they're, they're the common ones, hey, Steve? Absolutely. That, that seem to be nice. We're using all the rice ones. Um, that... Yeah. I'll tell you something funny. One of the reasons why I wanted this podcast is we're just releasing a new product, um, which is an essential fatty acid product. And what you're going to see is that it has stearic acid in it. Now, the stearic acid that comes from in the magnesium stearate, it comes from vegetable oil. Mm. Okay, so all of our nuts and seeds and that. So when you have a tablet, we, I calculated that previously, Alpha Mars, for example, if you t we used to use magnesium stearate in the capsulation of Alpha Mars because the Tonkat Ali is really sticky mm. and we needed to lubricate the machinery. Um, the equivalent of that was seven milligrams of stearic acid you'd get. If you're a vegan and eating lots of nuts and seeds, you're likely to be getting 100 grams in your daily mm. diet. If you're an animal fat meat eater guy, you're probably getting 50 to 70 milligrams, uh, 50 to 70 grams of this oh. stuff every day from your animal fat. Mm. It mainly comes out of nuts and seeds. Um, so when we made uh, an essential fatty acid product made up of vegetable plant oils, um, it's full of stearic acid. And it's a positive thing. I mean, in our tech data, we're talking about the benefits of stearic acid. Tell us, yeah, Steve. Sure. Tell us something good about stearic acid. Stearic acid can be converted into oleic acid. There you go. Which is, of course, is uh, olive oil. Olive oil. So uh, it, it can go from its, um, I think it's C16 or no, no, C18, isn't it? Yeah. 18. So it's got 18 carbons. It can go into an 18.1, which means it's a monounsaturated fat, which is the fat we want. Yeah. Omega 9s. And also, you know, you see on the website, you know, oh, is it safe? And it talks about all this stuff and the bottom answer is yeah it is yeah yeah but <laughs> it's even, actually even beneficial guys, yeah we? we found a heap of data showing that prevented cardiovascular disease yes. that prevented type Steric 2 acid. diabetes it prevented a lot of these other problems it's a really important semi-solid structural fat that it can mm. actually be part of our cell membranes and our cell walls and all that if, if you've heard of medium chain triglycerides they're, they're essential or they're not essential fats but they're saturated fats that are found at medium length anyway and they're found in coconut and those sorts of mm. things and they're extremely beneficial for you so these saturated fats are very highly healthy for us yeah. we used to think saturated yeah. and fats we all know magnesium this is what confused yeah. me the most we know magnesium is good for yeah. us we love magnesium Stearic, stearic acid, acid and stearates are actually really good stuff for you. They're, they're oily. We, we eat them every good day. oily supplements that we eat mega, mega mm. doses of it. That's why I couldn't understand how magnesium stearate got such a bad rap. Well, but we then when you went, we tracked it down to yeah. the dodgy mm. company that's trying to sell their natural excipients. I remember and looking at that going, you, you, that's really That's really horrible. sneaky because it all went back and it's all gone back to that one place. You can't find anyone else that's not just reproducing their info. Steve, so, it would be really awesome if there was a list which actually had the most common excipients and my, the ones that were good and different and hurt or and and bad you know yeah. is this is something you can we throw can create together this absolutely yeah, i mean if, if we could just use the tj list they're mostly bad yeah <laughs> <laughs> although they they use turmeric and that sort of oh, thing they, they, there you, know, you go cock neal, which is the yeah. the cockroach one yeah that's the uh, bugs. cockroach color they, what they color is that? that's blue isn't it yeah they, they that's the another blue. blue so you see blue that's not viagra because viagra owned the fdc one probably. yeah 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 but um Co yeah, that's, cockneal that's is, insect, is, so. is, is an insect colouring. You get the colouring from insect, which yeah. is weird. That is but, strange. You know, I, I think I've heard that before. Is it reds or is it what no, colour? Blue. No, Blues. Yeah, that, that's a blue one. There, there's also indigo carmine. That's the one where they the funny thing the is, can I say? Cause convulsions. Like, I, I would probably be happy to take the ones out of out of beetles. I know vegans yeah. wouldn't like that, oh, but okay. I mean, like, yeah. I, I, it's natural. You know, exactly. You know, so. Um, yeah, in terms of colours, well, you know, obviously, guys, we want to wrap it up. So, yeah. is there anything else that we need to cover before we get into some FAQs? No, Just, we'll do a report, won't we? We'll we will. We'll do, we'll do a report with a summary. I mean, it, if you go to the TJ website, you can download the colours that are available to be used by therapeutic goods, and that includes Ostel and Ostar. And there's some scary ones in there. There yeah. really, really is. But so, it's worth looking at yeah. the labels, worth looking at the pamphlets. And if, you, if, you t if you're a person that's taking a regular medication and not feeling yeah. quite right, mm. you know, maybe you could have a look at that because it's not always the drug mechanism of action that 
that is giving you the adverse reaction. Yeah. Um, and in some cases, you go back to the pharmacist and he'll review, you know, or the doctor may review the active ingredient and go, well, through this mechanism, I can't understand where you're getting those side effects. But then you could actually have a look at the excipients, the colours, mm. because they there's actually usually more of those in the drugs than there is active. Absolutely. And you also got to remember that there are generic drugs and then there are, you know, the actual mm. pharmaceutical ones. Generic ones are typically cheaper because yep. they've gone off patent or something. Um, so they have different Cause what's scary, ingredients in them as well. In America at the moment, uh, when I went to that recent trade show mm. and they were, uh, went in and sat into a clean label um, class workshop and they were saying that in America now they're getting problems with things like acacia resin, xanthan gum um, being looked at as evil stuff xanthan gum xanthan gum Ooh. maybe because it starts with an x yes yeah, <laughs> i don't know yeah yeah you know I it's don't like know. xylitol sounds really scary yeah too, yeah too. so these things are actually and i'll tell you something crazy funny so yeah. the lady started she just played a prank on us she put up these slides and she said right and listed off all these things she says are these good or are they bad and no one and we're in a room of scientists that all are part of this industry that we are one way or another involved in manufacture of products. Mm. And she said, and no one's going, and she's going, come on, put your, you got to be one side or the other. So That's I'm going to say, I'm going to break down, are they good? And if you don't put your hand up, then you're saying they're bad. And she's, and like, everyone's like, oh, and even I was like, oh, man, I don't know. It's like a trick question. Am I going to be mm. humiliated in front of these people by saying something's good that's obviously bad? Um, yeah, and that's what she was saying. She said, this is the bloody problem. She said, you guys are the actual experts mm. when it comes to making products and manufacturing. You guys know, except you're being led and by, you know, by the consumer that's Googling stuff, reading memes, picking up on the, the, the biased information with, by people with a conflict of interest. Yes, that's And it. they're changing us. So we're supposed to be the experts that know how to make foods, medicines, and that mm. sort of stuff. Mm. Yet we're being dictated by Google and, and these people that are – have a campaign against words they don't understand. Mm. And in, we can't get that education out there to actually show the truth because it's not showing up. Mm. Uh, people aren't finding the, the true information because there's the same bad information mentioned over and over and over again. Mm. So that gets that priority when people are searching. So it's really hard to educate anyone, which is why companies like us go, well, in the meantime, we'll just remove it mm. and we'll just go all natural. And then we realize, oh, man, I'm just so glad. If, imagine what would have happened if we found that the company that we're buying our natural excipients from was the company that was spreading the oh, evil. Yeah. It would just be, oh, no, deal off. Yeah, <laughs> a, 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 appearing as an angel of light. Appearing yeah. to be good, but actually having very dark motives. Yeah. Which is, uh, man, and what people will do to make money. Fears. Fear yeah. and greed. Look, fear and greed drives markets, man. Yeah. It's, it's mm. very simple. Mm. All right, guys, is there anything right. else you want to cover off on that? No, we so don't. In terms know, of it, I mean, there's going to be a lot of questions come from this. So, Steve, if you could create a list, that would be great. Sure. Um, you know, especially the ones to really avoid. I mean, those would be the ones I'm interested in mm. and how to find that. That'd yeah, be great. yeah, just download the TDA list. I'll just, most of them are bad. So, that's a good start, and I'll, I'll make a good list. There's some good ones on there. There's turmeric on there. Yeah, that's cool. That's a colorant that they can okay. use. It's even an active. Yeah, well, no, not according to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> The, these are inactive colorants. It's inert. <laughs> it's inert oh, colorants. Oh, my gosh. So saffron. It's not you know. oh, available, Steve. It's crazy. Oh, I don't get him started. All right. No, we don't get him started. No. All right. Guys, that's yeah, all that's we've got Jeff time for tonight, uh, today. So uh, we'll be back next week. All right. All right. Adios. See, See you then. then. All right. Thanks for listening. And remember, question everything. Well, except what we say.